Hello, Unbreak Me here with a look at the top 10 rarest LEGO electronics of all time. For this list, we are excluding all LEGO motors since I have already done a list about the rarest LEGO motors. Without any further ado, let's begin. At number 10, we have the LEGO Fiber Optics Element, which only ever appeared in just four sets. One system set, one Mindstorm set, and two LEGO Technic sets. The thin plastic fibers would stick into the light unit and then you could make staggering light effects. For example, in the legendary LEGO Technic 8480 Space Shuttle set, the fiber optic system was used to create the lighting effects for the rocket engines, which looked beautiful. Because of the fiber optic system, lighting effects were much easier and cheaper to create in your LEGO models. And this is definitely an advantage of the 9V system that both power functions and powered up never had. Now. A pair of powered up lights cost $10, and because of that, any LEGO lighting setup will be very expensive. I definitely wish that we get the fiber optic system again in the near future. If you're enjoying this video so far, and you want to learn about the rarest LEGO Technic pieces, gears, and more, then make sure to subscribe so that way you can learn all about LEGO Technic. No pressure though. No pressure. At number 9 we have the LEGO Mindstorm's Vision Command camera, and if we exclude the Mars Exploration Accessory add-on, this piece only ever appeared in just one set, which is the 9731. At the time, the vision recognition software was brilliant, especially for something you can just program at home. For example, you could divide the screen into different regions, and you could program your robot so that if something enters the left side of the camera, an action would activate. The robot could also recognize different colors with the camera and follow various objects. You could use this camera camera for so many different possibilities, I really wish that we got an official LEGO camera for the NXT, EV3, and Spike Prime. Fortunately, a third party company called Mind Sensors has already developed a camera which can be used with either the NXT or the EV3, and it opened a plethora of new possibilities for LEGO Mindstorms enthusiasts. In my opinion, LEGO should definitely bring back an electronic camera of some kind. Next up we have the programmable code pilot brick which only ever appeared in the LEGO Technic barcode multiset 8479. The code pilot has a light sensor at the bottom as well as a speaker and using various different barcodes that came with the set you could program different commands. Keep in mind that this set came out one year before the LEGO Mindstorm system, so at the time the set was absolutely revolutionary since it offered you even more capabilities than the control center sets. In my opinion, the best part about the programmable code pilot is that you're not required to use a computer in order to use them. With the LEGO Mindstorm's RCX system, you needed to use the Robotics Invention System software, which is now completely incompatible with modern computers unless you use an emulator. But even then, you still run into tons of issues. I have a feeling that something similar may happen to LEGO Powered Up, and it may be unusable 20 years from now. The code pilot combined new technology while also making sure it could be used for many years to come. This is exactly why this piece is so legendary. At number 7 we have the LEGO Mindstorm's NXT sound sensor which only ever appeared in just two sets, the 8527 NXT 1.0 set as well as the Education NXT base set. The sound sensor is one of the most innovative parts of LEGO Mindstorm's since it had a plethora of applications. The main way of using it was just as a volume detector. If something loud happens, like a clap, the robot would activate. This would be quite useful for having robots dance to music. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg, since you could actually program your robot to recognize basic phrases and words, like go, turn left and turn right. Dave Parker was able to achieve this functionality and this robot was posted to his website at nxtprograms.com. I really wish that LEGO would make a new sound sensor for the Spike Prime system, perhaps something a lot more sophisticated that could also essentially serve as a microphone and record sounds. Next up is the Control Center one which only ever appeared in just a single set, which is the 8094 Control Center released back in 1990. A new copy of the Control Center one piece is actually a little bit more expensive than a new copy of the Control Center two piece on Bricklink. With the new Control Center set, you could make extremely awesome robots, eight years before the introduction of the LEGO Mindstorm system. This is pretty incredible, especially since no computer was required to use it. However, the Control Center was primarily used as a control unit, 
and not necessarily something you program, although it did have some small programming capabilities. Considering that it was released 30 years ago and still offers comparable or even in some cases better performance than the new electronic system, the control center is absolutely legendary. If you enjoy learning about which LEGO electronics are the rarest, then make sure to subscribe so that way you can learn all about LEGO Technic, including the rarest Technic pieces of all time. But no pressure, no pressure. Here we have the remote controlled buggy receiver unit without the auxiliary port, which only ever appeared in just a single set, the Hot Flame 8376. There were two versions of the remote controlled receiver unit, one with an auxiliary port and one without. The one with the auxiliary port is a little bit more common since it appeared in two sets as opposed to just one. Both the Supersonic RC as well as the remote controlled race buggy contained this electronic component. The auxiliary output essentially controlled an extra 9 volt motor independently from the main power, which was very useful for things like off-roaders with winches. On top of that, using the buggy motors, the RC system was the only one to have such enormous power and incredible speed, making them quite useful for making your own LEGO Technic off-roaders. The new ones with the powered-up system are very weak in comparison. I definitely hope to get my hands on the complete RC system, so that way I can modify my LEGO Technic sets and make them a lot more powerful. At number 4 we have the LEGO 4.5V touch sensor, which only ever appeared in just one set, which is the LEGO 9700 control center released back in 1987. This was a very fun robotic set, it's amazing to think that, despite the touch sensor being introduced back in 1987, it's still around to this day in the Spike Prime system. The touch sensor has a variety of different applications in LEGO Robotics, from simply bumper car mechanisms to something more sophisticated like using a touch sensor to synchronize walking robots. However, with the introduction of absolute positioning motors in the Spike Prime system, the touch sensor isn't really needed much anymore, and as a result, it's not included in the new LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor set. At number 3 we have the Power Functions Infrared Receiver version 2, which only ever appeared in just two sets, the 2012 9398-4x4 crawler as well as the 2013-41999 special edition 4x4 crawler which came from the You Design It We Make It competition of late 2012 and only 20,000 copies of the set were ever produced. The version 2 infrared receiver provided much better performance when running two large motors at the same time. There have been two different versions of the Power Functions infrared receiver, the very rare version 2 one, as well as the much more common regular infrared receiver, which has been a part of LEGO sets since 2007. The version 2 infrared receiver was never available to purchase by itself, so you could only get them from the two 4x4 crawlers. As a result, a new copy of this infrared receiver goes for at least $50 on Bricklink. <laughs> At number 2 we have the 4.5V whistle control block which could control a motor either to go forward or backward. This is different from the one which could essentially control a motor to only go forward, which is a lot less desirable. Essentially, you had a 4.5V microphone which would be connected to the control block. As soon as you whistled, the 4.5V motor would go forward, and as soon as you whistled again, the motor would stop. Whistling two times rapidly would cause the motor to go backwards. There is an electronic control unit set, 139, which only contains the 4.5 electronic components like the forward and backwards whistle control block. Believe it or not, a sealed copy of the set goes for well over two grand on Bricklink. And then there's the actual electronic train set which contained the improved whistle control block. And there are absolutely zero sealed copies of the set available on the market. And a used one goes for about $500. And by itself, a used copy of the improved whistle control block goes for at least $100 on Bricklink. So it's very rare. At number 1 we have the Black NXT which was made to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of LEGO Mindstorms back in 2008. Only 1998 copies of this electronic device were ever made which pays homage to the year 1998, the same year LEGO Mindstorms was first released. Along with the Black NXT itself, you got wallpapers, special building instructions, a special program and more. A sealed copy of the Black NXT goes for about $140 on Bricklink, which is very expensive. Someday, I definitely want to get my hands on the LEGO Mindstorms Black NXT. If you want to learn about the rarest LEGO motors of all time, then click on the video right over here. This is your Unbreak Me here, and I'll see you in the next one.